So here our sprint is started. Okay, so now every story, you know, uh, will have some subtax because uh, you will have a developer involved with this, uh, with this story. You will have a tester. So say example, our developer doing some tax. So how are we gonna create some subtax? Let me show you. Okay, um, so here, if you click on your story, if you click on your story, and here you can see create subtax, there is an icon here. If there is an attachment, some, uh, you know, if you have some attachment a document, like some screenshot, you can add those attachment with this, with this story. Here is you can, if you have any link, web URL link, you can add this link or you can create some subtax. If you click on subtax, then you have a subtax here. There is a, you know, just a, this new box will open. You say for the de developer, you know, say example, developer will have a, will have a subtax like review this story. They will review this story, okay? And then uh, the estimation is done, design and coding. So example, this is a subtax for, this is all our, you know, DAP team, developers, uh, you know, uh, subtax design, they will design and coding, they will do the coding. And then they will do the unit test, right? You can create a subtax, the unit test is done. They will create a unit test. And then for QA, QA will, you know, prepare test environment. This is the tax for QA, test environment, create a test environment, and then uh, create, test scenarios, they will create a test scenarios and then they will create a test cases, create a test cases and then they will create a test execution. They will create a test execution, right? And then they will create a uh, report and bugs. If there is a report and bugs, okay? If it's a if it's a fail, then definitely there will be you know so so I just created multiple tags you know so this text uh, you know uh, story it just based on say just just for developer then there will be some tags for the developer if it just this uh, also for this tax for I mean uh, stories for QA the QA will create some sub tags so I just create mix all of them just just to show you the how to create a sub tags. So if you just close it, you can add some more stuff here. You can add epic also. If if your story is missing the epic, you can add the epic. You can this is your epic. So it's this is the part of, of the epic like Walmart. So it's the part of the Walmart epic. Remember we create epic. So this story was missing the epic. So we can add the epic also. So and after that, you know you can comment someone. So say, you know, multiple people since uh, involved with one story. So if you want to do someone else for this story, it's like you have uh, some dependency, like the, you know, the, uh, say example, your developer have to complete the unit test before you started to testing. So you can ask the developer over here, like everybody, all the parties can, can have a conversation under this story so that it's it's recorded. Everybody knows that you know who's asking and to do something. So you can just click on over here. You can put at the red, and you can you can you can you know select the person. Say MD Sureful, whatever the like developer. Did you uh, complete the unit test? Unit test, sir. Okay. So assume that you're you know you are a tester so you want to confirm the developer they complete the unit test so that you can start the testing and then you know then you can say saved and then developer will answer over here yes you know you will answer over here at the red you know whoever your name you say okay yes i complete that uh, you know unit test so 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 all parties they can have a comments over here and after that you close this one 
So you can see all of your tax, your sub tax is now shows under this. You can minimize it under this tax, under this story. Okay, this is the story and it has a few sub tax, all this. Okay, so similarly, you can create sub tax for all the, you know, tax you have over here. It's like uh, the story you have, open this one, the second one, and then you can create your sub tax same way, right? Create a sub tax. Say I'm just putting a sub tax for a keyway. So keyway uh, review the story. They will, you know, confirm the story. It's everything is it's good. There's no information is missing. They will have the prepared the test environment. So make sure that a test environment is good. And then they will have a test data. Then they will have a create test cases. And then they will have a test execution. Okay, they will have a test execution. And assume that if this test cases fail, one of the you know, steps is missing or one of the uh, you know, uh, steps was not working is fail and then they have to report a bug and they have to uh, they have to reset uh, you know retest again so i'm going to add this guy with the same epic under the same epic okay and then let's okay label that's fine close it so now this one have a some sub tax okay so the moving forward what will happen remember so your sprint is started so next day you do some work and every day remember during this sprint you have a stand up meeting remember that we have a stand up meeting every day morning the you know early in the uh, early in the morning first thing is called a stand up or, or a scrum meeting right scrum meeting so let me show you again So this is our scrum or this is, we create the Epic. We had a features and under features, we have some stories. Now there is some sub tags. We create a sub tags, right? Like similar, like this, some of the sub tags. And here, and then we do a meeting. Remember a scrum meeting or stand up meeting, five to 10 people. So all those things. So we're going to do a, uh, uh, what's called here. So here are the product owner. So we had a backlog. And after that, we started sprint. So we did a sprint planning, right? And then from uh, from the uh, uh, back product backlog, we move some of the story, like two story to a sprint backlog. So our sprint is started, like we have a two weeks of sprint. It could be one to four weeks. Now we have a two weeks of sprint. And here, you know, so we so our scrum is, um, our stories, I mean, our sprint is started. And, and the first things we do every day, daily scrum meeting. So daily scrum meeting, just update, you know, everyone will update three question. What I did yesterday, what I'm going to do today, and if there are any blocking or any announcement, you know, that's that's a three straightforward, you know, answer you will, you will tell in front of everybody, in front of your team, like a scrum team, okay? So we're now here. And, and based on your update, they will move your item. So you say, okay, you know, I did, I, I you know, uh, yeah, yesterday I work on review story and review story is done. So you can move it and done. And uh, I'm working on design and coding. So this is on progress. So they will move the tax. Uh, okay. And then, and then, then and uh, say tester will say, you know, I'm doing a preparation test environment or my test environment is, it's, 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 it's good to go. It's complete. And then I'm creating a, I create a test cases scenario. This scenario is done, or I create a test cases. You know, my test cases is on progress. So for the developer, design is and coding is on progress. QA is creating test cases is on progress. So next day, you know, uh, we'll come back again and they will work and then they will update. Okay, developer update their tax. QA update their tax. Okay, developer saying okay, design and coding is done my unit test is done so i'm good to go and then tester will say you know i 
complete the test cases, creating the test cases is done, and I executed test cases also were done, and there is no failure. All the, the test cases is passed, okay? We haven't seen, we haven't seen yet how to write the test cases. I mean, we know that there will be some number of test cases, but in Zira, where to write the test cases, we haven't seen yet. We'll see. Assume that, you know, you wrote your test cases in Zira, there is a way, you know, there is a uh, tools in Zira, there is a features to write test cases. Assume that you know it, you know, we'll see. That's a separate part, but we'll see it. So assume that you did, and then it says, okay, update. It means this tax is done, done. So now you can see this tax is marked as a done, you know, you cross. So it means this tax is completely done. When all the sub tax related with the, with the test cases is completely done, then you can see this, this story is done, done. Remember the definition is said DOD, definition of done. Definition of done, it means a story or any issue will say, will consider as a done when all the related, you know, uh, the sub tax is done, then you can say this story or this issue is completely done. Okay, so similarly. DOD and DOR are the same. No, no, DOD is the definition of done and DOR is the definition of ready. Definition yeah, ready. You mm -hmm. say there, like in the word file, it says or, just give me one second. So, definition of done, and you can say definition of ready. Yeah, you see, a uh, issue is called DOR or. The issue it will call DOR when your, your user story is clear. The story is clear, it means all the information is clearly mentioned up there. There is no information missing. And mm -hmm. that story is testable. And also that the story is testable. Story is defined. User story has an accept, acceptance criteria. There will be some acceptance. The last term, like DOD, you said Agile follows some standard process or satisfaction to confirm any issue is done called D O R or done done. Uh, story is 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 done called D O R. Sorry, uh, this will be done done. I'm sorry. Called this is not the right. Will be it's uh, it's done called done done. So yeah. when it's done, it's done done, and when yes. it's ready, it's D O R. Yeah, exactly. Ready with the proper information. The information is not missing. There's mm -hmm. no and it's uh, this item is testable. Okay, everything. It has a complete information, some acceptance criteria. Okay. So that's your first story. So it's done. And second story, say assume that okay, this tax was done. This is pip test preparation is done. Create confirmation test data is done. Create test cases is is uh, it's uh, on progress or maybe test cases is done, but test execution and you found some bug. So this test execution is a fail, okay? If it's a fail, then you have to create a bug. Okay, now yeah, it's time to create a bug. If it's a fail, you have to file a bug. So how are you gonna file a bug? You file a bug here, okay? So this time test execution, I mean, you did a test execution, but it's a fail, okay? So you're gonna create a file a bug. Previously, if you see my video, you know, in YouTube, you will see there is a, plus sign over here. There's a plus sign to create any types of issue. Like, you know, issues that means uh, epic story, bug, all those things. But in new feature, you know, the, the new upgrade, they did the uh, Zira, they did the new upgrade. And then, you know, it's not here. The plus sign is not anymore, they move it. So where you can, I think you can add items, maybe this one, uh, shortcut repository, no, not this one. Let me see. Add a link. Uh, not this one. Here, the, the create. Top one, create yeah. yeah, create. If you cl click on create, then it's give you the option. So what do you, what you are going to do? You have to make sure you have to select the right project. Then your issue type would be this time it's a bug, right? And then your summary you'll say uh, you know uh, maybe you'll say uh, your bug. It's like uh, what is the Say payment option is not working. Save 
visa payment option is disabled disabled okay and then you put here is that the the description description it means you are going to put the steps to reproduce this bug how the developer they can reproduce this bug okay so you have to put all the steps to reproduce your, your, your bug so you will say reproduce all the steps so go to i mean you have to put everything go to www.walmart.com and then you'll say you know uh, search your item search uh, say item uh, for sofa sofa you know then add the item to cardboard and then uh, click on uh, click on uh, okay click on uh, uh, okay paid the item then uh, match subtotal subtotal okay or total match subtotal or total just match subtotal make sure this uh, your total is is match and then uh, select then you can say okay try to select uh, say visa card as a payment option payment option you will notice then you will notice then then you will notice the visa card option is disabled disable okay is disable so what you can do also you take a screenshot you take a screenshot of that you know that uh, that part so you take a screenshot and you can add that screenshot with with your you know description so you can add a screenshot over here attached file you can attach that file screenshot it will be easy to understand by the developer because this bug will assign to a developer so developer will follow follow your steps to reproduce follow this one by one steps and to reproduce where you know you found this bug so if there is a screenshot it will also help them to see the, you know to to have a more visualization so always good to have a screenshot when you file a bug okay so and then you will say you will say the solution would be the solution would be uh, okay you will put some solution also make sure the the visa uh, payment option it's enable and 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 able to able to complete the payment payment okay so you will put some conclusion or solution what do you exactly want so this is the reproduce you know to reproduce your bug and the last part is what the solution what do you exactly want okay so something like this but you make sure that is this is the standard format you have to have to write break it down all the steps to reproduce your bug okay and after that you who's you are the reporter who's reporting and who's going to work it depends on the product owner product owner will find out the person or developer who's going to fix this or work on this bug but you can see your version and now also it depends on the product owner uh, you know is going to be fixed on this version or another version the next version sometimes the the, the features the bug is very complicated and it's a time consuming that need to be fixed on another version so if you, you you will talk with the product owner verbally first will uh, you will say that hey i found a bug about this 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 i'm going to file a bug so what do you want you want to fix are you going to fix this current version or is going to be moved to the next version if it's a product owner says okay leave it empty so you will leave it unreleased version because it will you know he he will 
you know, find out when it's going to fix. If it's that, okay, it's good. This is going to be fixed in this version, select the version number. And the priority, definitely this is a highest priority because this is one of the highest, you know, the option that you, one of the, uh, the payment option is not working. Okay. And environment, you may say, uh, uh, so it depends on what environment you test, right? So maybe you say Windows, uh, Windows uh, of Windows OS like 10. And then, or you may say Mac OS 13.1. So what about that? And then you can say your browser, Chrome, the latest Chrome version, okay? The Chrome, latest Chrome, or if it's an IE, if the, your, your application or software support multiple browser, and if you test this, uh, these features on multiple browser, you put the list of your browser too, okay? And here is an attachment. Like if it's a screenshot, you can add the attachment. Affected version, you know this is affected on this version. And then, you know, issues, um, it's uh, leave it empty. And then assign, assignee, it will, the product owner fi will find out who's going to work on this. So leave it as an automatic, it'll auto, you know, a product owner will assign the person who's going to work on this. Epic, so definitely you will list your Epic because it's a part of this Epic. This feature is a part of, or this bug is part of this Epic. Sprint, leave it empty. If it's a product owner say, okay, this will fix on this is Sprint, you will select this is Sprint number one. If it says no, it will be fixed on another. So leave it as, you, are, you can leave it empty. Assume that this is a since high priority bug and then your product owner says, yes, we are going to fix this bug on this sprint. And so we have to fix it. So you select this sprint, this one, okay? And then create. Now you can see this bug is over here already. You see the visa payment option is disabled. This bug is over here. So what will happen now, this will assign to someone, you know, product owner will assign to someone. So say example, it will assign to say this guy. Okay, this guy. And then it will, he will work on this. And then, you know, it will have a, some subtext too. Okay, so subtext verify the bug or you can say reproduce the bug. He will re reproduce the bug. Okay, reproduce the bug or fault, reproduce the bug and then uh, record. He do the record, record. So let me say record and fix. Okay, fix the bug and uh, you say unit test, unit test. Okay, this is all of the part of the, you know, developer. And as a, as a tester, you will make sure that you test it again. Okay, retest, uh, retest and execute. You can say retest and execute is done. Okay, so this will be some subtext related with this, with this uh, bug. So here, so you test execution was done for this. You move it. This one is done. Click on is done. But here, this bug is not was not done. So every day we'll update. You know, say assume that now everyone they updated their bug and it was a reproducible and it's a fixed bugs and then it, you did a retest and it's a, it's a pass, okay? So everything's good. So you move to done stage. Okay, so your test cases, everything is done. Okay, so every, since everything is done, your, uh, your sprint is complete, okay? So all, everything is, is done, your sprint is complete. Here and then you can see since we did it everything in a one day, that's why it didn't show. But after you can see there's a 10 days remaining since it two. So I, I did everything is one day. So you can say 
that's why I did it. Usually after 10 days, the last day, when it's all, everything is moved to here, it automatically shows your, your sprint is complete, okay? So you can say, yes, complete. Click on complete. And after your sprint is complete, in our document, you will see it shows, remember there is a sprint review meeting happen. This is a sprint, you know, a different type of bug, uh, sorry, different type of uh, uh, chart, graphical chart, the how you perform your sprint. Okay, how, how it was this, you know, it shows like here, like you can see sprint report. This is kind of report during the sprint review meeting, which is happened at the end of the sprint. So a sprint you've done was like a, a Monday and the next day, like a Tuesday, there will be sprint review meeting where all of the different stakeholder will be present. Like your whole scrum team, your uh, product manager, your team manager, your team lead from different teams, like uh, from the dev team, from the QA team, and uh, could be your engineer, double, uh, you know, the uh, the the uh, the vice president, or could be the the director of the engineer, or even could be uh, you know um, your um, stakeholder, different stakeholder like your customer. Your customer could be on that meeting. So the people who are involved or dependents on this on this story, on this sprint, or involved with this product, they will be, the different people or just from the support team, they will be present on this sprint review meeting. And they want to see, they want to know the update. The main reason for this meeting, you know, we are going to update everyone how we did our sprint. Did we able to achieve all of our complete, all of our story as we planned or we missed some of them you know, where we are now, okay? All those things. So here you will see some of the features. One of the, and it will show through the, some of the report and chart. You can see one of the report and chart, it's uh, like sprint report. It will show you when it started, when it's finished. We finished within one day. That's why I said July 11, July 11. And, and you can see, uh, you know, your total story point. We had a story point, eight story point, and then we had a three story point. So it's like 11 below 12. So this is your total story point and how it goes. You know, this is the, it's, it goes like we found one bug and then, you know, that's why it goes a little bit down and then we'll able to finish all of them, okay? And here is that, all of the story you can see. The two story, there is a one bug we found, okay? So you can see the type of the story, type of the story, two story, one is bug, all other issues, the priority and the stage is done, done, okay? Those things. So you will, I mean, Product owner, Scrum Master will take a lead. Product owner and Scrum Master will take a lead on this meeting. Okay, but every every one person from the team, like from the DAP team, from the QA team, they will explain some of their work. Okay, so one of the uh, you know other steps that they will explain. Example, uh, say burn down chart. Uh, I'm going to explain to you what is the burn down chart. Um, so up until now, do you have any, uh, any question? So if you go, no. okay, if you go to burn down chart, this is one of the common, you know, uh, things that they explain during this sprint review meeting. And sometimes on interview, they may ask you, what is a burn down chart in Azile? Okay. So burn down chart, you can see. Burn down chart, what, if you see the definition, burn down chart is a visual measurement tool that shows the completed work per day against the projected rate of completion uh, for the current project release. Its a purpose is to enable that the project is on the track to deliver the expected solution within the desired schedule. It shows like, you know, it's a burn down chart, it shows like, you know, how you move on in our, in our sprint, like every day, uh, say we have total, uh, how many story points? We had a point like uh, 11, right? 11 story point, and we're supposed to complete it in two weeks from July 12th uh, to uh, July 11th to July 25th. That's uh, two weeks. 
in two weeks, how we perform every day. So you have a 11 story point and it's a two weeks. It means 10 days, 10 business days. And so if you divide 10 days by for 11, uh, so it would be like every day, how many st story point you're supposed to complete is more than one, right? So that's the expected that every day will finish one story points. That's our expectation. So it shows this chart, it shows how we perform. That was the expected, but how we perform. Did we able to finish one story point every day or, you know, we, or, or we didn't able to finish, right? If there is something missing, if there is a, like in our in our case, we didn't miss anything. We are, we are complete both of the story. But sometimes you will you will see some of that tax or some of the story will not able to complete. So that time, you know, it will show you know how many story point was missing and and how we perform every day. So all those things you know started at, you know it shows that your what was your burn down and you know, how you how you move on your stories. So those things, it shows this graph. And then, you know, your uh, product owner or, uh, or scrum master, they will explain this burn down chart, okay? And next is velocity. So this is the, you know, a couple, few of the uh, uh, report they usually explain during that meeting. Velocity, it's like, uh, it's help you, like whatever your plan estimated, and you can see it committed, like we committed is uh, this is the gray is a bar is committed and and completed committed means you know so we we committed two story point and we completed both of them on a sprint and that's why both are same but it's if you wouldn't finish uh, both of them you know uh, the completed part would be shows down and it's it's very helpful this chart after you finish couple of sprint like after three four sprint you finish it will show you all of the bar and it will give you average idea that every sprint how many story point we can complete on an average so when you do our planning you know we'll have some sort of basic you know, average idea okay on an on an average we we are able to complete say 20 story points if that's an average so this average idea will be come up after you finish three or four four is four is sprint say a few is sprint then it will give you some average idea okay how many so when you do our planning you know during our planning you know we do our planning as per our average idea we find from the last three or four sprint so this velocity chart is very helpful and this is very important that help you to define more accurately your planning. So because you know, at the beginning, we don't know how many story points we can finish by one sprint. But you, after you do it two, three, four, four is sprint, you know, it's give you, you can see the value, you know, this chart and it will give you the idea, okay, you know, maybe 20, we did some overestimation or we maybe we did some low estimation. So what would be the better that this chart will help you to give you the better idea uh, to make your better plan in terms of your story points. Okay, so that's all about the velocity chart. Is that clear? Make sense? Yeah, yes. So yeah. those are the, you know, couple of the, these three, usually, you know, three uh, uh, report and, uh, or chart, they usually explain during the sprint review meeting. So that's pretty much, you know, all of your, uh, you know, agile process into an agile process, you know, through the Zira that we, we created our, we created our project at the very beginning. We assigned some of the team member to the project. I'm, I'm going through from the beginning, right? What we did up until now. And then we assigned some of the people to the, uh, uh, the project who will do this. You know, there will be admin part, most probably, you know, your scrum master or team lead uh, or your product owner or sometimes DevOps people, you know, they will create the project, then they will assign some of the people who's going to be part of that, uh, that project. And after that, your product owner will create some of uh, Epic as per their requirement from the client. And then he will create some of this uh, backlog product item or stories. And then, you know, there will be version number and then, you know, there will be, they will do a planning or meeting. And after that, 
planning or meeting is um, is done i'm going back to the chart here so after that you know planning or meeting is done your sprint will be started you know, your sprint backlog so some of the product are from the story will move to here and then your sprint will be started could be one to four weeks and every day we'll do some daily scrum meeting so we'll update the team what we did yesterday what i'm going to do today and if there were any blocking or any announcement okay if there, someone takes a day off they will also let them the team know like i'm off tomorrow or you know and then when the sprint is complete there's a sprint review meeting that shows some of the chart or graph or report how we perform our sprint did you able to you know uh, complete the mission all the tasks as we committed you know if it's not where was the burn down you know so, so all those things and then definitely is finish work and then sprint that's the last part of your sprint cycle on your SL. it's called sprint retro okay sprint retro i'm going to explain you right after i share you another link so we're on end of this link okay let me share you a new link <clears throat> 